what is up everyone? Hope you're all well and healthy out there. Today I'm going to answer your questions that you commented under my presentation video of my DIY 7 string build. If you haven't seen that video, make sure to check it out in uh, the top right hand corner. So let's dive into the questions that you had about this guitar. What was the process with clear coat finish? I recently finished the guitar, but it's not all smooth. Sad smiley. I sanded the guitar to 320 grit sandpaper. I then applied Crimson Guitars uh, finishing oil, which is an oil with hardeners in it. So it's going to build up layer by layer. So it's recommended to do three to four, if not even five, six, seven layers. It's getting more glossy the more layers you put on. So you can control the glossiness. I think I'm going to try a natural finish, you know, tongue oil or some other natural finish. Uh, for my next build, which also is going to have a swamp ash body. Now, I should have used probably some some grain filler uh, beforehand because, you know, it really sucks up a lot of oil, uh, especially on the sides, and uh, it it feels op it feels open pore finish, which is nice. But to really get you know that satin glossiness, um, pore filler would have been useful here. So yeah, maybe on the next one. Hey, where did you order the wood? The top looks stunning. It does look stunning. I've ordered all the woods for this build uh, from Solar Guitars uh, from Slovakia, which is a very, very nice wood shop. The advantage of that shop is that you can, you know, you can view the exact blanks that you are buying. So if you are buying a top, for example, I think it's important to see the top, to see the actual top that you're buying. So you know exactly what you want and uh, you will get what you see, which is really nice. Now, another place where I like to buy woods is from guitarsandwoods.com, uh, which are based in Portugal. Also very nice. They have very, very affordable blanks, which I would recommend if you're building your first guitar or second guitar. The only thing is you will not see the exact piece of wood that you're getting, which is a compromise, I think. For the price, it's all right. So if you're just buying basic blanks, you know, a hard maple neck, ebony fretboard, something like that, uh, where the grain doesn't really matter that much, uh, I think it's all right. That's awesome, man. I've always had the desire to make my own guitar, but I've always thought it might be far outside my skill set. For someone who struggles with mathematics in general, would it be too hard? Excellent work, dude, for real. Thank you so much, Robert. I thought too, it was too hard to do, but it's not. Um, the thing is, take your time, take your measurements, don't rush anything, don't do anything without knowing the outcome or the reason why you're doing it. So it's not about, you know, oh, let's try this, and oh, now I ruined it. You know, it's not about this. It's about, okay, what, what do we need to do Take your time. Guitar building is not that much about math, to be honest. Um, the most important math are the fret positions and the scale length, but you will get those exact numbers from the Stumac fret position calculator. I can link it up in the description. You can type in your custom scale length, your number of frets, and you will get the exact positions where you need to cut the fret slots. <clears throat> Other than that, the body shape, the body thickness, uh, where you carve away a bevel, that's all aesthetics and ergonomics, but it's not really mathematical. What string gauges are you using? I have the same scale length 7 DIY build, but even with a 62 on the low B string, going below an A is still rather, rather floppy. I've used an 11 to 64 Boomers set, a very affordable 7 string set, which works fine, to be honest, for drop G sharp that I have the guitar in now. I prefer to have a bit more, you know, control over the string. I, I like I like them floppy. Why small frets? Good question. Why not? It was a bit of an experiment to use small frets because people always praise in reviews or so. <clears throat> sorry. Always pra uh, people always praise jumbo frets in reviews and demos and you know guitar videos, but they never really say why. So I wasn't I was never sure why are jumbo frets nice. Why are they better than, let's say, vintage small frets? And then I've come across instruments like, I don't know, Dingwall basses, which have huge, massive strings, but they have small frets. So my theory about, you know, having big string gauge and big jumbo frets is wrong or is not applicable. I think the only difference is 
is the feeling. So if you have small frets, your finger is closer to the fretboard or almost touching the fretboard with the string if you press down. Um, if you have a very big fret, you will be far away from the fretboard. So th that is the difference in feeling. Um, and I wanted to see for myself, how does a seven string with small frets feel? And it feels rather nice, I must say. I like jumbo frets, but I feel like small frets are underrated. I can always refret this with jumbo frets if I want to. Um, but yeah, for now, I think it's cool. It's, it was a nice experiment. Dude, how much do you want for it? I'll buy it. I want it. Yeah, so about the uh, selling thing that I was talking about in the last video, I don't think it does make much sense selling this guitar. I don't know, because, because of the flaws and uh, I figured it doesn't make any sense, logical sense for, let's say, for my business, if I choose or if I make a business to, you know, put something into the world that is not perfect. So I don't want to sell something that I'm not 100% uh, you know, convinced by myself. I, I am so f proud of this instrument, don't get me wrong, but I know the issues that it has and I know that I as a customer would not like these issues regarding the fact that it's built in the basement, that it's my second build. I don't know, it's just, there shouldn't be those issues if you are buying a guitar. And you know, I, I can't just throw this away for, I don't know, 300 bucks or so, <laughs> doesn't make any sense. So this is going to be a prototype forever. I will start selling guitars at some point. Now, if you've been following me on Instagram, you know that I've been thinking a lot about launching my own custom shop at some point. I am working on my next prototype and if that turns out the way I want to, I might think about you know, making this to my production line custom shop guitar. Uh, it's a headless model. Here's the sketch, by the way, or the render. This is going to happen, probably, hopefully, uh, but not until next year or even in t one, two years, uh, because I really want to nail the quality before putting out anything. So, yeah, looks great. Very inspiring. How much does it weigh? Very good question. And uh, I had to weigh it myself to know the exact figure. It feels super, super light. That Swamp Ash Blank was already very, very light. And uh, this is probably the lightest seven string that I've held in my hands. It weighs 3.2 kilograms, which is extremely light for a non-headless seven string. So it's a really porous uh, Swamp Ash Blank. So yeah, I'm really happy that it's so light. I like light guitars. It's the exact opposite of my first build, which weighed over four kilograms and it's super, super heavy. For an extra question, do you find the spoke truss sword adjustment wheel to be better? It seems like it makes it a lot easier than trying to fit the truss sword adjustment at the top. Also, how did you cut the little thumb rest under the nut? Spoke wheel, truss sword adjustment, absolutely amazing and uh, super useful. Now, I know you're not adjusting the truss rod every day, but if you do, it's a lot less of a hassle. You don't have to take off the cover, you don't have to you know, reach with the Allen wrench somewhere under the strings or between the strings and find you know, where the nut is. I don't know, it looks cool. And it wasn't that much uh, additional work, to be honest. The only thing I was you know, wondering about is uh, the truss rod is sitting at a different place. So I think it's 44 millimeters long, so let's say, I don't know, up to here somewhere. And uh, if you would put it up there, the adjustment, it would sit here. So it would have a different effect on how the neck is responding to your adjustment. But so far, I could not tell anything negative about this. This neck is totally adjustable like any other neck. I was also a bit concerned um, because of the scale length. I think if you are building a baritone like 28 inches, you might consider a base truss rod. So it really sits at the most length of, of the neck, so uh, you don't get a weird crooked adjustment. Uh, oh yeah, the, that uh, thumb rest you're talking about, if you mean the volute here, this just automatically happens if you carve away the neck here and leave this this uh, straight surface here. So it, it helps to prevent headstock cracking. Well done, hardly looks like a basement project, but why did you not went for a shorter scale, like 25 and a half inch. Regular, ordinary, boring, cheap 
uh, seven strings have 25 and a half inch scale. <clears throat> Boring and cheap. Uh, I don't know. I th I like extended scales because you can use thinner string gauges for the same tunings uh, and have your, your tension, basically. Yeah. Second part of the same question. I know nothing about guitar making, but this looks also quite chunky. Yes, very good point. Someone else also pointed that out. I have to admit myself, it does look thick. It does look really chunky. But as a matter of fact, it is not thicker than any other guitar. It has the standard 45 millimeter thickness, um, like a Strat, like the Charvel, like my Carvin. They all have the same thickness, but I think it's due to the relatively sharp edges. There's no bevel all around the guitar body. The Strat has the same thickness, but it doesn't look that thick because of this edge here, which softens the shape, makes it look more thin, but at the core, it has the same thickness. Would love to make a guitar one day. I have pretty much all the hardware for the guitar laying around and almost all the tools. T -t tools. But making the neck and fretboard just sounds so intimidating. It does, but if you take the time, if you take your measurements, it is absolutely doable. It also depends on what kind of neck you want to build. Do you want to build a headless neck? Do you want to build a straight headstock like this one? Or do you want a angle at the headstock like my first build? So I had a scarf joint here. That's something I did not want to do for my uh, second build. So what I've done here is there is a slight angle a very very slight angle But it is all one piece. So what I've done is I ordered a base blank uh, So I had a lot of material so I so I could carve this neck out of one single piece of wood Yeah, I'm, I'm drifting off the topic fret slots and all that stuff really sounds intimidating but if you take the time if you measure precisely uh, it is absolutely doable. It is a lot of work. The neck is, I don't know, I would say 80% of the work, but it is absolutely doable. Did you forget about the strap buttons or was it intentional? Uh, it was intentional, in fact. So no strap buttons, very clean look. Is that Padalka Space's body shape? Yes, it is. I forgot to mention that in the last video. Um, it is not the exact shape like Padalka Space, but let's say it's heavily inspired by the Padalka Space. Does it have a resonant note? My 7 is resonant at middle B and that note dies off twice as quick. Not the end of the world though. I'm just interested if yours suffers from that thing too. Um, I have no idea in fact. Um, that doesn't have the most sustain ever. Um, but that may be due to the fact that the fret leveling is not quite right. So if you have some buzz, um, the note is dying off more quickly. That's normal. So I will redo the fret, uh, fret level at some point and uh, get more sustain like that. But I haven't really noticed that it has a resonant note. I think just the open G sharp is really nice and gnarly. So yeah, that's all, that's all I can tell you. All right, so much uh, about most of your questions. Uh, if there's still something you want to know, make sure to comment under this video. I'm still very, very happy with the outcome of this, uh, of this build. I'm looking forward to build my third guitar. That build is going to be documented. Um, this was more of a background project for myself. The next one is going to be a proper project for the channel and for you guys. Yeah, it's going to be a lovely journey. So if you like this guitar, if you like what I do, make sure to subscribe to my channel so you're not going to miss the upcoming uh, video series about my headless build. Yes, it's going to be headless. As always, at this point, I want to thank my patrons for supporting me and my channel. Thank you so much, guys. It really means a lot. If you are interested in having some goodies and candies, like chord sheets and tabs to my original songs by No Ostriches, uh, make sure to head over to my Patreon page. Thank you so much for watching this video. Take care, stay healthy, and uh, I will see you next time.